Meeting of the Long County Code Enforcement Board to order. It is by the clock on the wall, 6:01 p.m. April 9th. I'm, yeah, April 19th. So if everyone would please rise. I'm going to do a um, quick invocation and pledge allegiance. Uh, let's go. Let's do the invocation first. Good God and country. That's the Lord. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful spring weather we've been having. Thank you for another opportunity to come together to serve our community and uh, our neighbors and in doing so serve you. We pray that you would guide these proceedings to, uh, to your desire and will and help us to do the very best that we can to, to, to do your will. As always, Lord, we pray that you would bless uh, this community, our home, Walton County, this great state of Florida and this great country of ours and all those who give so much to protect us in our, our way of life. And we pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any announcements? I, I don't have any other than it's nice to be back. It seems like it's been a while. Um, any, any announcements from staff or we need to? Okay. Uh, do we have any witnesses that we need to swear in? It appears other than okay. it's myself, apparently. All right. Mm -hmm. Go. Yeah. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Mr. Rose? I do. Thank you. What's approval for chair and vice chair? Uh, every year, the approval for chair and vice chair, we voted in for chair and vice chair, has to be done by the board. Is it time? Oh, it's time for that again? Yes, okay. sir. So, all right. Um, I move we keep things the same. Second. So that was, all right, just for just for the record, then that would be uh, Mr. Tom Stein uh, to remain as chairman of the board, uh, Code Enforcement Board, and myself, Dave Lovell, as the vice chairman. Amen. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval for Code Board meeting time of meetings. All right. And again, it's that time of year we just have to, you all agree to. It's the third Thursday of every month, normally at 6 p.m. Um, if anything else changes to that, I mean, that's up to you guys for your decision making purposes, but it's just one of those things that we have to cover. What time does the staff get off? 5 30. Y'all want to try meeting at 5 30 for a couple of meetings anyway and see how that works out? You guys can meet anytime you want, it makes no difference to us. Would that I would. That, I'd be in favor of that. Yeah, if it helps like them, we should get them off early. We can be at seven o'clock in the morning for all we care. Does the <laughs> well, commission have well, anything? Hang on a second. We, we look like we might have a, a comments for. <laughs> if I could make a comment, sure. Um, we have two boards that start at five o'clock. I would uh, you rather make design review five. board and planning commission start at five p.m. Um, I don't think there's any statutory reason. I think it's up to this board as to what time you, you choose to meet and on what day you choose to meet. Um, so there's no reason that you know of or any objection that you have uh, from the planning department or as representative, you know, and okay. back, we're all here until at least 5.30 anyway, so. Well, do we want to go to five? That'd be all right with me. How, who's not here this on the board? I've been, like I said, it's been a while. Who, how many board members are absent besides Tom? Do you have your list? Um, well, we had a total of nine members total, including the two alternates. So how many we have up there now? Four. So we're missing five. <coughs> if you'd like, you can keep it. For the next meeting Thursday, you know, for on thir the third Thursday at six o'clock for the next meeting, and then if you want to have more members here for the next. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do this? Why don't we? Why don't we make 
go ahead and make it a five if everybody here approves and then subject to no significant opposition from the absent board members and if there is we can revisit it next meeting is that acceptable i have no argument with it sir we got crushed all right well good hey that makes great sense to me Any, all right anyone want to mm -hmm. set that into a motion or just like it uh, yeah, but I think we need to append it with uh, subject to <coughs> no uh, position by the other board members, absent board members. Well, I move, let's just make it five and we can always change it. That's true. I think it's Second. That, that, that work, Renee? Yes. Okay. It, uh, so it's the third Thursday of every month at beginning at five o'clock. Yeah. It's your motion. We can and discuss who seconded it. That, who seconded it? I think no, There's no precluding ever bringing this up. Again, okay. no, I guess not. We just do it once. Right? <coughs> okay, all right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the board meetings will now be <coughs> two, five <PM coughs> instead of six. <coughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't mean y'all can start bringing us like more cases to go away. <laughs> we try not to really. All right. Okay, um, report by code officers. We have one case on the agenda, so take it away. All right. All right, for the record, my name is Officer Rose, Walton County Code Enforcement. Um, and for the record, my final report in this uh, slideshow will be uh, sent in the, uh, I lost it, for evidence. Um, this is case number 17001066, Carlos Mendez Gomez. Um, this is a <coughs> business operations on a vacant parcel. Uh, Mr. Gomez operates a landscape company and is using his vacant parcel as a storage yard for his company. Um, on November 9th, a complaint was received by Walton County Code Enforcement concerning running a business from the residential property. There was also junk and debris. It's on a vacant parcel located on Harley Road, which is in the unincorporated area of Walton County. I, Officer Kurt Rose, conducted an initial site inspection and determined that the parcel was in violation of Ordinance 97-28 of the Walton County Land Development Code, specifically Chapter 11.00.01 for development order approvals and Chapter 5.0708C, non-operating vehicles, junk, and debris. I'll bring you through to the next couple of slides. Um, the authorization by final development order um, requires any business activity of any kind conducted on a property. You need to have a development order in order to do that. Um, and outdoor <coughs> storage, fairly common one for us. Section C is uh, junk and debris. No owner shall allow partially dismantled, wrecked, junk, or discarded, otherwise non operating or non registered or unlicensed motor vehicles or junk to remain on such property longer than 30 days. Uh, this, this section shall not, shall not apply with regard to any nuisance or junk in an enclosed building or shielded by a visitor <coughs> screen or so located on a property as to not be readily visible from any public place or from any surrounding public property. <coughs> parcel is located just off of um, 13th Street on an undeveloped right of way of Harley Road. Um, if you're not familiar where 13th Street is, it's uh, Churchill Bayou. It's the opposite. It's the far west end of Chat Holly, turned into Churchill Bayou, and then uh, 13th Street is a northbound street off of Churchill Bayou. Harley is uh, not quite about a half a mile up the road. What, what go back off the road? What the um, where's the what's the two roads there that intersect that T intersection? That's right? Harley Road that is, East, which is a finished road, which is a dirt road, um, but it is a, an improved road. Uh -huh. And then 13th Street is the north south one. What's the um, red square? The red square is the subject property, which sits uh, but obviously that's an old area. That's a 2016 area, so. Okay, go ahead. I'll let you finish it. Um, Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is that is that Harley Road 
Um, yes. Extending that hadn't been developed. Correct. Yet. The uh, the double bars with the long empty space right below the red is Harley Road right of way. It's a public road. It is a public right of way. Yes. Okay. There is also a mosquito ditch that runs along the northern road part mm -hmm. of that. So the road, while it is kind of <coughs> overgrown in the parcel, it is technically a dirt road because South Walton Mosquito Control uses it continuously for their purposes. But it is traversable <coughs> by a vehicle. Yes, it can. is. And and all right, I'm fast. Why? Why is um, I, all I'm seeing on the subject parcels is vegetation that there's junk and debris and buildings and everything else? You'll see in the in the coming photos. All right, that's what I'm seeing. Okay, right. um, this is actually what the roadway looks like itself when you look down Harley Road. Okay. Um, it is a clear right of way with a mosquito ditch on the north side. Um, the trailer you see there on the left is actually one of the subjects trailers that he uses for transporting pine pine straw <coughs> and other materials uh, the subject partial has a culvert and bridge format over the top of the mosquito control ditch that's been there for many number of years um, and as you can see when you look into the parcel this is from the roadway itself um, there's some minor junk and debris here and there throughout, um, but it, that's why the understory brush is cleared out, but the canopy trees were left alone. So, okay. so on the aerial, you don't really see it as well cleared out because of the canopy trees still being there. All right. On November 14, 2017, during the initial inspection, I notated various landscape business materials throughout the parcel, um, as they were indicated in the first photo. On November 28, 2017, a notice of violation was sent out certified mail to the property owner of record with Walton County Property Appraiser's website. Uh, the green card was returned signed on December 14, 2017. On December 21st, a reinspection showed no change in the property. On January 10th, um, a telephone contact was made with the property owner who stated he was unsure what needed to be done. I explained the violation and the resolution to him. Um, he went to the planning department to see about getting permits, <coughs> was denied the use of his parcel for any commercial activity from the planning department. I advised him at that time to cease using the property for any business activity and he agreed he would stop. And what, what's the land use district that that's in? Residential conservation. Um, after that initial meeting at the planning department when he was denied and he agreed to stop, um, this follow-up inspection was completed and as you can see, cleaned up quite a bit. He got rid of the trailer. Doesn't have it all gone. He still has some bags of concrete there and whatnot, but he cleaned up quite a bit. Um, for the next 30 days, Subject inspections showed no signs of any commercial activity. Um, however, he never did completely <coughs> clean up. This has always remained that way. On February 21st, 2018, an inspection showed a new, lo new load of pine straw on the trailer and more pine straw loaded to the right-hand side. Um, I, on February 28th, a follow-up inspection showed the pine straw had been removed. At that time, I stopped and spoke to the complainant who walked down the road to meet me out there. Uh, he stated that <coughs> daily traffic had started again. Um, basically, he agreed, the owner agreed to stop, stopped for about three weeks, and then started using it again. Um, on March 5th, I then sent out a notice of hearing, certified mail to the property owner record, the Walton County Property Appraiser's website. On April 9th, notice of hearing was sent back unclaimed. I posted the notice of hearing on his front door at his residence. He lives in Defuniac. Um, subsequent inspections throughout the remainder of the case and to this date, including this morning, um, showed continued back and forth use with materials coming and going from the parcel. <coughs> you can see in this one, the trailer is back, has pine straw in it again. Now there's also on the right left hand side of the photo, there is some uh, plant buckets and stuff that are starting to show up. Then again on this one, it's now gone. 
more plant buckets on the left hand side so basically he's just continuing to come and go with the trailer storing stuff out there bringing his garbage and plant buckets back sometimes they leave sometimes they stay throughout the whole case <coughs> um, the timeline on the left hand side of the slide uh, shows you the events and when things happened all the way up until this morning when I did the, this photo was from this morning <coughs> Um, the conclusion of laws, this is a law, lawfully constituted code enforcement proceeding convened pursuant to Chapter 162, Part 1 of the Florida Statutes and Chapter 12 of the Walton County Land Development Code. The board has jurisdiction over the subject matter and the respondent notice of this proceeding has been duly provided to the respondent as required by the code. The respondent, Carlos Mendez Gomez, by reason of the foregoing facts is in violation of 11.00.01 .00 and 5.0708C of the county code. The respondent is subject to the enforcement jurisdiction of this code enforcement board. Uh, recommendation for enforcements and penalties. It's my recommendation that the board determines, one, that the vacant parcel located on Harley Lane is within the unincorporated area of Walton County and is subject to chapters 11.00.01 .01 and 5.07.08 .08 of the Walton County Land Development Code. Two, that proper notice for the hearing was given to the respondent. Three, that a violation of the Walton County Land Development Code, Section 11.00.01 .01 and 5.07.08 .08 does exist on the property. The respondent is to correct a violation within 30 days of the date of this board's order. The respondent is further ordered to contact Walton County Code Enforcement Department to arrange for a reinspection of the subject property to verify compliance with this order. That if the respondent fails to comply with the above actions or fails to bring the property into compliance with the applicable codes, ordinances, and regulations according to this order, the board assess a fine of $250 a day until the property is brought into compliance. <coughs> Any questions, gentlemen? Who made the complaint against him? Um, the neighbor. How far is his neighbor from you? Uh, right at the end of the, um, the roadway. Do you have to drive by that to get, to, get home? No, he does not. Um, his major complaint with them having the development and, and using it as a, basically a lay down yard for his debris in his trailers is the traffic. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to meet there, all his construct, his landscape crew meet there in the mornings. Um, I've never been able to catch them because they're usually there 5 a.m., whatever, but they're coming and going periodically throughout the day back and forth, up and down the road, different vehicles, different times. Um, I've never ever myself personally witnessed them there, but. I don't live on that road either, so. Can he put a privacy fence around that? I noticed that. Uh, he started to, he put it started to put I mean, a privacy can he, fence. Can he do that? Not sufficiently that he would block it off. And it would, still wouldn't make well, any difference as to the development order that he would be required for operating a business on. I was gonna say that, that, let me interject there. Cause I mean, there's nothing he could do on a conservation residential to mm -hmm. make it an allowable mm -hmm. activity. Right? Correct. That was the determination by planning at the time. That's why he was told then. So, I mean, he, he would not be allowed to do even right. You know how long he's on the property? 16. 2016. 2016 is when he crossed the property. He was on the other side. He didn't have any excuse then. Yeah. Yeah. Other, <laughs> others uh, in that business, they would uh, normally like <coughs> have some sort of building they put this in, a storage unit, or rent um, something from someone else? Or? It just depends. I mean, landscapers can do it any number of ways. A lot of times they'll do jobs by the day where they'll drive over to a landscape company, pick up what they need for that day, and take it out to the site. Um, it's that's entirely up to them how they want to do it. Some do have warehouses that they'll store stuff in. Some have parcels that are far larger and out in the country where they can store stuff on. You know, it just depends on how they do it. Some of them will actually get development orders and start nurseries, and eventually it builds into more. But it just depends on the situation and how much the uh, individual person is willing to invest in their company and their time at that point. But that's on them. Anybody else? Any other questions? <clears throat> Johnny? No? Um, I have one, but I lost it. Uh, <laughs> when, a, you said, a, excuse me. He's, he's in a residential going right. to operate commercial is where it's over. Right, I understand. But you you met so you met with him early on. What the timeline? I can read the the timeline, but I think you said fairly early on, and he indicated he was going to correct come into compliance. Right? He's going to cease and desist or whatever he needed to do. Correct. That was on and around January tenth. 
So I basically just gave you lip service and continued on his way? More or less it seemed that way. I mean, in a lot of cases, code enforcement wise, when we actuate on someone and tell them you have to stop what you're doing, normally speaking, they do right away until they can figure out what else they're gonna do. And that's what indicated here. He stopped for about three weeks, made a good show of it. I left the case open an extended period of time to verify that it was completely stopped and would get cleaned up. And then ultimately sometimes like in this one, they just start up again, <coughs> thinking maybe, you know, nobody's been there. Nobody's, they haven't heard from anybody and they're good so to did, go. Did you just go back out on your own to mm -hmm. check? Yeah, I, I, sched I scheduled weekly inspections. Did we get more complaints or just? No, I, I, because the case still remained open until in my opinion, the entire property sure. was cleaned up. Um, I just did weekly follow-up inspections to see if he was going to comply fully or not. And ultimately, he finally came back and started using it again. Okay. Any other questions of uh, what's your yeah. recommendation? Um, ultimately, the recommendation is for the board to, the respondent is to correct a violation within 30 days from the date of this order, and the respondent is ordered then to contact Walt County Code Enforcement Department to arrange for a reinspection of the property to verify compliance. Um, if the respondent fails to comply with the above actions or fails to bring the property into compliance with the applicable codes, ordinances, regulations, according to the order, the board assesses a $250 a day fine on the property <coughs> the property is brought into compliance. Okay. I move to accept Officer Rhodes. Well, wait, 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 wait. Look, we got to, I guess, go through the formalities here, I, I think. is Okay, so we're, we're done with questions. Any questions from the board of Officer Rose, correct? Okay, any, anything else for Officer Rose? And we have no representation of the respondent, so seeing as such, I'm going to bring the, no public comments, I'm going to bring that this portion of the hearing to a close and now ask for any Discussion among the board. Need a motion first before you discuss. <clears throat> okay. All right, that's right. So now we can go to your motion. <laughs> so you've closed the public. Let, let me let me ask one, one more question though about the just the. <coughs> I, I'm confused, and we've gone back and forth before. It seems like we didn't we go to a process where we found in violation or not and if we did find in violation then we came back to the penalty or we you find you first have to find that it's a vacant lot that's within the unincorporated area of walton county that is a uh, residential slash conservation area and then is in violation of sections 1.01 of the development order without and he's not he's also 5.078c non-operating vehicles junk and debris so you got two violations on this one. Right. He's running a corp, uh, commercial business out of a residential conservation lot, right. and then he's got junk and debris, which is a further violation. So is that one motion and approval and in addition to or incorporated with the, the, uh, the fine, or does the fine or the penalty have to be a separate? Well, you could do them separately, but I, that's why I mean it seems like we've gone back and forth yeah. on that. Like I think that. I think what you're referring to is is when the fine actually takes place. Once this it went, whatever you agree to, um, if you agree to 30 days and the 250 a day, if he doesn't come into compliance, in 30 days I'll do a compliance inspection. If it has not been brought into compliance, I will then bring the this case back to the board for you guys to institute the fines. Well, one the thing I think you're talking about, and he, you're right is you've got two activities. Mm -hmm. You've got the commercial activity, which has to cease and desist. Then you've got the removal of the junk and debris, which is a separate, uh, <clears throat> because he can remove the junk and debris and still continue to operate as commercial. So mm -hmm. yes, sir, I, would, I would say it's cleaner to do it as two different, two different violations. What was the complaint? Was it commercial activity? Or? Yeah, primarily it was commercial activity, junk and debris. Can you clarify the, the comment that you just made that he's operating a commercial business out of here? Do we have evidence that he is selling things out there? Or is he just storing things that he uses on his He's job? using it as a transfer yard. So basically. that's commercial activity. That's a commercial activity. All right. So do I have a motion as to the violations in question? Okay. I accept Officer Rhodes' recommendations. 
All right, in other words, so if we if we take it into two steps, we're gonna find you're you're recommending that we find him in violation <coughs> of both counts. Mm -hmm. You want to separate and let's make it two separate. Well, you Renee can do it as one, but you, you you're going to take his, if you're going to take his recommendation <clears throat> verbatim, that covers everything. That okay. Yeah, would the penalty go with both of them separate mm -hmm. penalties? Well, it would be two fifty a day for total, but oh. it's either either both of them have to stop for the penalty to stop. <coughs> in thirty okay. days, I, I got you. you need to be clear about this. That in thirty <coughs> days, if he hasn't stopped commercial activity and he hasn't removed the debris. Right. Then the 250 a day starts, and it'll stop when both cease and desist. Okay, so so just again to be clear, so Johnny's motion is that we find in, in in violation of both counts, and that we accept Officer Rose's recommendation for the penalty of 250 a day if he has not come into compliance within 30 days of. <coughs> Today, is it today? But we make, no, need to make two final. motions, right? <coughs> One for each count? No, that's fine. No. You just can take just like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So All got. right, I just want to be clear on what they what Okay, so you're good with that? That, yeah. that was a restatement? Okay, so we have a motion. Do I have a second? So moved. No, you're second. Oh, he, he moved. Okay. So, so you're, Robert, you're second. All right. <clears throat> so we have a motion and a second. Okay. Any further discussion? Here none. I call the question. All in favor of the motion for the board say aye. 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 Opposed? Here none. The motion carries. <coughs> All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Now, before you close, it's three minutes. All right. So, uh, that matters behind us. All right, Renee, go ahead. Um, uh, I, I apologize for not catching this before, but we did not address in the agenda the minutes from the last meeting. And I know Jennifer's been out, so we need to move to uh, to continue to approve the minutes from the last meeting, which looks like it was in January, until our next code board meeting when Jennifer returns. Okay. Can we do that? I mean, can we do that. You can do that as a chair, just so so that it's in the record that we will address the minutes from the previous meeting and this meeting at the next so meeting. So I just declare that or, or call yeah. for questions? You don't have to have. So then uh, I will so declare that we will continue the reading and approval of the January <coughs> meeting minutes until the okay. next Code Enforcement Board meeting occurs. Okay. Okay. Presumably next month or whenever. All right, is that all we need? That's all we need. Anything else? This motion to adjourn, if that's over. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Uh, thank you, folks. Thank you. This is continuing education. Officer Rowe, did you, do you have a, um, an order ready?